Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove and on today's episode we review William Leroux Weller 2023 bottle. Run the video. Alrighty then folks, welcome back to another new and exciting episode of the Whiskey Cove. And I've been saying that a lot lately because I feel like we've been doing some really exciting content, albeit maybe whiskey that uh, not everybody has been able to get lately. So hopefully uh, you can live, as I always say, vicariously through me. Let me be the vessel for you. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate every subscription, every comment. Uh, I try my best to respond to as many comments as I can. So uh, please keep commenting. I, I love to hear what you guys are like, finding in your area, how much you're paying for things, and kind of just like what your favorite whiskey is and that sort of thing. So comment anything at any time. I always appreciate that as well. If you haven't already, go over to the whiskeycove.square.site the link is down below in the description and check out the Whiskey Cove's shop where you can get some premium Whiskey Cove glassware etched, laser etched with the Whiskey Cove on it for as cheap as you can find just about anywhere. As close to cost as I can get it to your front door. We appreciate a bunch of everybody who's bought stuff so far. Uh, any profits made, I always roll them back into the Whiskey Cove to be able to buy some of this stuff to bring you new videos at home. With that being said, if that's not what you want to do, just watch the videos and just enjoy yourself. I appreciate that as well. So with that being said, of course, we have a very special bottle of, of whiskey here. So I did a, uh, I did a store haul video very recently. That was in December where we managed to pick up some excellent bottles of whiskeys. We also managed to get this bottle too. So basically this year, uh, as I always tell you folks at home, if you see a lottery, just try to get your name in for it. Do whatever you can to get your names down for as many lotteries as you can. And I did that this year and I do every year. Uh, I ask people in stores, are you doing a lottery? What are you doing for your, for your releases for BTAC and Pappy this year? And I gather that information and then I'll just submit lottery entries. And that's what I did. I think this year I probably did about 10 to 15 lottery entries, which might sound like a lot, but you know, you have to speculate to accumulate at the end of the day. And, Albeit I have a lot of whiskey, excellent whiskey here, whenever you get an opportunity to buy one of these very special humbling bottles, I'm gonna do that. So I was able to get this from another lottery here in Colorado. I paid MSRP for it. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. When we do the store haul video, the new one for this ball and other ones, we'll include it there. So definitely keep an eye out for that. We were also doing a video uh, where we blind this bottle up against Weller Full Proof on Maker's Mark Cellar Aged, which is a video you should not miss because it's, uh, it's gonna be a fun one, that's for sure. So definitely keep an eye out for that. That should be dropping within the next week or so here. With that being said, we're here to do a review, so let's get this mouth to stop yapping so much and let's just get into this bottle here. So this is the 2023 edition of William Le Rouella. I think that's the correct French pronunciation of it here. Le Roux. I'm not quite sure, maybe I'm just making stuff up, but we'll go with uh, William Le Rouella for the time being here. As you can see, uh, it's sports and dons, the typical B-Tac bottle. It doesn't matter if it's a George T. Stagg, Sazerac, Thomas, Handy, or Eagle Rare 17. They all share the same bottle. Of course, the color and, and kind of the, the, the coding on it is a bit different. This has a burgundy kind of uh, Tuscan red color to it. This is coming in at a whopping 66.8% ABV or 133.6. A proud product of Kentucky and of the Buffalo Trace distillery here. Just like the street lights lit this town, like a fire in a blaze, gotta burn it down. Can't be afraid to leave this out. We got this far, don't know how. unicorn for me for a long long time finally got it this year been hunting for it for so long I haven't I haven't I've had an opportunity to get this bottle before but there was something else on the list that I was wanting even more so we got that but however we have this today 
let's get into it here. So I, uh, much like I said, I said the Tuscan red, it also kind of has like the Tuscan kind of like a creamy, yellowy patch that is associated with that. You have a lot of history for William Luruella on the back. We also have a picture inside as well, but the only way you can get to that picture to see it is you have to drink it first. So uh, we'll be working on that throughout the course of this year, I'm sure. Uh, apart from that, it has some really nice fonts and really nice gold right in there as well. And that typical badge that a lot of BTAC products do have. Uh, the William Luruella, or the WLW, is also on the top there. It does have a real coke and as you have already heard, coke pop is uh, mediocre at best. We have poured the whiskey into the glass already here. We are using the Whiskey Cove's Space High Taster here with the Whiskey Cove emblem engraved into it here. With that being said, let's go in for a nose here. Before we do that, let's look at the whiskey in the glass here. And as expected, you know, you are getting a pretty oily whiskey that is there. Really rich looking and just does a great job at lacing the glass as we roll it here they just they just leave shadows of whiskey just sticking to the glass there that really adds to the nosing of a whiskey i think the best way to really describe how i nose whiskey is that i don't nose whiskey or taste whiskey how you like whatever you do it works for you you do it i know that some people like the spiral their whiskey that doesn't work for me i feel like it kicks up too much ethanol and uh, an example I can give of that is uh, if you've ever drunk or uh, finished a whiskey in a glass and you've just set said glass off for a while and then come back to an hour an hour later where the glass has been empty and you nose it you get no alcohol on it at all you just get really rich sugary sweet oaky notes because all the alcohol has dissipated into it and you're, de you're just left with the fundamentals of whiskey so I'd like to roll it a little bit so whiskey sticks to the inside of the glass. The whiskey that then sticks to the inside of the glass, the alcohol evaporates from. So I'm really left with a, uh, a, a very like rich bourbon, the fundamentals of what the whiskey is there without the alcohol, I guess. With that being said, let's go in for a nose here. It's just so rich. There's just an abundance of cherries on the nose. You know, you really do know, if you have someone who drunk whiskey for a long time, or bourbon quite consistently for a decent amount of time, you'll know, you'll know what a Buffalo Trace whiskey is because it just has a very specific vanilla and cherry note that is just the whole lot of all Buffalo Trace whiskeys. And primarily bourbons and wheated bourbons arise a little bit different there. But it's just that, uh, like that vanilla waffle cone ice cream vanilla and just like the maraschino, bacon cherry, candy cherry, that those sort of notes are the fundamentals. And just the wood is just so well balanced on this whiskey and on a lot of Buffalo Trace whiskey as well. So inviting, no proof is a massive takeaway from this. At 66.8% ABV, there's just no alcohol coming up. It's, uh, it's always a sign of a very good whiskey if you can make something with that high ABV, that high proof. But then when you nose it, it uh, tastes or noses like a 40% ABV whiskey. It's, uh, it's very counterintuitive of what you would think, but uh, it's, it's just a phenomenal tasting experience and nosing experience. With that being said, let's delve in for the taste here. It's just so rich on the palate. It's, it has a lot of cherry cola vibes. Think of like a Coca-Cola cherry cola note, but then also has more of those like spices from like original or old cola, where like you have like maybe more of the bacon spices and like the OG root beers from back in the day. Kind of has some of that. There is a little bit of spiciness, uh, like a wood spice that travels throughout the palate here, but then it continues with this like, you, you get like a, like a, like a, a jar of Luxardo cherries. Just get a spoon dip the spoon in there, scoop up some cherries with the simple syrup and all the juice that's in there, shove them in your mouth, taste through that. And that note that you get from doing that and my old fashioned fans at home, 
I know you've done that before. That's kind of what's in this glass. It's just so syrupy, so red, uh, maraschino cherry forward on the palate, but then that wood just runs through the whole thing. And then you get a little bit of spice there that balances out just the whole glass as well. Let's go in for one more taste here on the William Luruella. Yeah, I really do think that cherry cola, like Dr. Pepper, almost like a touch of the medicinal, no doubt, is a great way to explain this. Mouthfeel is, uh, is just wild. Wild in the sense that it's, uh, it's just phenomenal. It's so fantastic. It is the gift that keeps on giving. You have a taste of this whiskey, you probably can sit down, put the football on, and then by the fourth quarter, uh, maybe then the flavors will stop ringing through the palate. It's just so long, such a long finish with this one, and it's a beautiful cherry forward, woody. It's it's fun. it's just phenomenal. I'm obviously a little bit lost for words because I'm obviously taken aback just how good this whiskey is here today. The mouthfeel is the best mouthfeel on whiskey I've ever had. Uh, I can't think of a better one. It's really difficult when I say like this is the best I've ever had. When I say this is the best of something, I mean I can't think of something that's been better. There might have been a time that I've tried something better but right now in this moment I can't think of a time where I've had anything on the mouth in terms of mouthfeel better than this such a phenomenal whiskey the ABV doesn't really come through you get a little Kentucky hug but it's only something that's reminiscent of like a bottled in bond bourbon so if you're someone who is new to this channel well firstly thank you for joining the whiskey cove community here we appreciate it and secondly we do a couple of things to review whiskey by scoring it here on the channel we do a value for money uh a being the best f being the worst and then we do a score out of 100. So for the score of 100, we just consider the whiskey that is in the glass for value for money. We take into account a lot of different things, findability, uh, price obviously, uh, and just kind of the overall branding of the whiskey. That's why we can get a little bit creative with this. So value for money. So I paid $150 and some change, I think, for this. What is an A? It's an A bottle of whiskey, isn't it? You know, let's be honest. Uh, it, Yes, $150 is quite pricey for bourbon. I know that some of you folks at home uh, will say that no whiskey is worth $150. And, and I, I totally get that. But then on the flip side of that, uh, you might have someone who says that no truck or no car is worth more than $10,000. Uh, but then the same people who said that no whiskey is worth more than a hundred bucks are maybe they're sitting in a $30,000 car every day. So it's kind of find what you like and be willing to pay within your means for something you enjoy. And I, I enjoy this and I can create so many memories with this bottle of whiskey. And it's just a phenomenal bottle. The juice is phenomenal inside as well. Everything about it just ticks all the boxes. A for value for money. So B, uh, no, no, A for value for money, B is in like B, the second thing well, that we're going to move on to, and that is the score out of 100. I'm getting a little bit antsy here, I'm getting a little bit giddy because uh, this is going to be one of those scores. And when I say those scores, I mean top tier scores. And if you're someone who's only been watching the Whiskey Cove in the last six months, you're probably thinking that I've been dishing out really high reviews, like it's going out of style. Uh, however, I feel like we've just had the ability to maybe get bottle, better bottles of bourbon lately and I want to bring the best reviews to you folks at home about the whiskey that everybody's talking about, if I can get it. So I have been doing some higher scores lately, but I think that's justified because I feel like the whiskey that we've been reviewing has been of a, a better tier, if you like. However, with this, this is, I just, uh, <laughs> I know what I want to give it, but I, uh, it's really difficult for me to, to, to say the words, I guess. So the highest score that we've ever given on the Whiskey Cove, and we've been going for about, uh, for about 16 months here, so which is a decent amount of time. And the highest review that we've ever given, or high score for a review, has been the George T. Stag 2022. Very special bottle. Also a very special bottle. So, Score of 100, 98 out of 100. Equals the George T. Stag. Doesn't better it, is not worse, is just every bit as good as it. This is a wheated bourbon, that is not. Should we blind the two up against each other? I think we need to. I think there can only be one winner, but I just can't see this being better than that, and it's definitely not worse than that. So this is a 98 out of 100. Where do we go from here? If we're giving whiskeys 98 out of 100, we have like 99 and 100. 
and is anything ever uh, is anything ever pure perfection? I I guess we'll have to wait and see and see what happens with the Whiskey Cove in the future. But however, a 98 out of 100. We've been a little bit loopy this review, so thank you for staying with us because uh, I'm very excited to be able to have this bottle here in the Whiskey Cove. However, this review has been going on long enough. I'm gonna go and sit in a corner somewhere, cradle this bottle of whiskey, and then finish this whiskey that is in the glass. So if you enjoyed today's video, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, comment down below. As we see on this channel, as we drink through the world's whiskey, one glass at a time. Cheers. Thank you.